Hello everyone and welcome back to the Virtual Village Hall Film Club. We're thrilled to be joined today by Thaddeus O'Sullivan, director of the Miracle Club, which opens at Cinemaco Cinema across the UK today. We hope you've had a chance to watch the film's trailer that we've been playing. Um, Thaddeus, it's a pretty big day for you, so we really appreciate you joining us here at the Virtual Hall Film Club today. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. So the, the Miracle Club is a wonderful tale of friendship, of family and forgiveness set in a working class 1960s Dublin. The film follows three women who win a place on a pilgrimage to Lourdes, a sacred Catholic site in France. With each character facing her own personal struggle, it's not difficult to understand why they might be searching for a little divine intervention. So while the film has a lightness of touch with warm humour, the women are carrying some heavy secrets, um, which the arrival of a figure from the past brings to the surface. The Miracle Club's leading women are no less than the great Dame Maggie Smith as Lily, Kathy Bates as Eileen, and Laura Linney as Chrissy, with the very talented Agnes O'Casey as Dolly. What a cast. Can you tell us a little bit about these characters and their backstories, please, Thaddeus? Um, yeah, so the, the, the strap line, I guess, is, um, simple enough um a bunch of working class women go to lures looking for a miracle um but they take with them um uh on the face of it um uh problems that they have some are medical uh, uh in need of a miracle for rectification and then others are um well one uh the agnes or case character uh, her child doesn't speak, so she's going to uh, to look for Our Lady's intercession to perhaps help him there. Uh, the Maggie Smith character has um, a promise that she's always made to go to Lourdes, which a lot of Irish people make uh, um, to go to Lourdes one, once in their lifetime, almost like a trip to Mecca, that people feel that they should go once in a lifetime. So she has nothing um, particular to, um, no particular miracle that she knows about. And so um, uh, during the course of the, um, uh, when she, uh, um, when, the, when they get to Lourdes, they realize that um, an old um, friend has joined them and bringing some problems from the past. And Maggie Smith is somebody who has to, is forced to address the past through um, uh, the character, of, uh, through the, the, uh, the in, uh, through, um, Laura Linney joining them in Lourdes, which came as a complete shock. They were, the women were imagining they were going to Lourdes uh, um, uh, to get a break from home, from kids, from all the rest of it, and to have some time to themselves, to contemplate themselves, uh, have a more reflective, uh, uh, a, a peaceful moment uh, where they can um, uh, perhaps achieve their miracle. And then this Laura Linney character turns up, and she, as I say, she brings with her problems of the past which um uh, infect uh the, the whole um the whole uh, journey that they make so it it becomes uh, not so much the um the the um the journey that's going to solve all their problems but uh it becomes a journey which introduces them to a problem which they have buried for many many years and uh, returns uh, in the guise of laura linney Thank you. We've, we've just, um, you've just dropped some of the amazing names and we've had a lovely comment from one of our virtual village haulers who's really looking forward to seeing this amazing cast. Um, so what was it like to work with such incredible actors and how much directing do actors of this calibre and experience need on set? They need very little directing, really. What they need is, um, um, they need is a script that they're happy with, uh, characters that they're clear about. Um, and um, so presumably they were uh, comfortable with that. Um, what's required after that is, which we got from all the characters, uh, it, from all the actors, I should say, is, uh, you know, a study, an understanding of the characters. There's only so much that I can say to an actor about a character. But in the end, uh, the actor needs to find uh, something uh, special for them that um, unlocks something in the character. 
and I think that um, all actors, all, all great actors, uh, have that um, that instinct uh, for finding something that feels right for them in a character that they can play. In the case of these three actors, I've never quite come across anything quite like it. Um, we've had we had very little rehearsal uh, time, and yet um, they had done so much. Um, uh, deep thinking about the characters that they, um, they didn't really need much in the way of uh, directing. The context uh, on the set would be to make sure they understood um, um, that what I would call the mise-en-scene, which is how I'm going to do things. Um, that will come, come out when I start to block the characters, uh, block the actors on the set to see who's going to stand where, where the camera's going to be. They get a sense there of the what I'm aiming to achieve, and uh, we will have a conversation then about, about what they can add to that. Um, but uh, as regards, uh, you know, long analysis about the characters, they they really had a they really had done an awful lot of deep thinking, and uh, that's where it strikes home what a star can bring, or rather, a star, an actor of that quality. Uh, can bring to a piece um, their experience of uh, reading characters and um, telling those characters' story is something they've been doing for many years, and and uh, um, it will behold me to listen to them carefully when they're when they're suggesting things. Many um, of the the kind of characters the women have never set foot outside their hometown before the the pilgrimage to Lords, so it's really. Um, the journey of a lifetime for them, giving them an opportunity to kind of escape their domestic lives. And in terms of um, understanding the characters, like you say, Thaddeus, do you recognise the women in the story, perhaps from your own upbringing? Oh, I certainly do. I come from that background. And um, um, we lived in a street uh, exactly like the street in the story uh, where the characters live. Um, and um, I had some, some understanding of... Um, of the world they lived in, um, the kind of jobs the men did, um, the kind of uh, relationship between uh, families uh, and also large families. Of course, Ireland in the 60s, um, families tended to be quite big. And um, no, I, it's, it, was a, it was a world that was uh, I was quite comfortable with, which is just as well because a lot of these uh, actors were coming to, to Irish culture for the first time. So there was a lot of things that were new to them. And um, that was the thing that the, when I say the context, put, give them the context, they could understand the character pretty well, but they needed to, to feel that they were um, uh, in the right place at the right time, saying the right thing at the right time, being appropriate to being Irish. Um, and, uh, you know, we were all watching for that, not just me, the director, but uh, the dialect coach and, um, you know, the designer as well, uh, would often uh, talk to the actors the actors will be interested why that wallpaper, why that, why that type of a room, and, and so on, and and there'll be discussions about um, um, uh, how we do things, uh, or how the Irish did things, how Ireland was then, and um, they're able to um, imbibe all that, and and um, and and put it to bed, make them feel comfortable about um, being in this context, and then. Uh, a lot of people contribute to to that, and they they were they were all the three of them. They were brilliant at picking things up, understanding things very 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 quickly, and um, welcoming any changes that were that we'd introduce. Um, if something wasn't, if something, I think what often happens when 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 uh, an actors play Irish, I think foreign actors play Irish, they they tend to. Um, fall in love with the, the more idiomatic language. And uh, that's the one that doesn't work because that's that's harder for them to do, to get the rhythms. Uh, uh, so we did we did cut a lot of that out and keep the dialogue reasonably simple, except when it comes to a, a humorous turn of phrase, something very particular that, you know, we would work on to get the rhythm right so that we'd get the laugh and people would, uh, would get the, the idiomatic element. But if it's too colorful, Actors who are playing Irish who are not Irish—that might be the thing that they would latch onto, 
uh, because it's, it's, uh, it feels like right. But in fact, it's one of the hardest things to, to do. Uh, and that, that often is construction of a sentence or, um, as I say, the more colorful language, which um, sometimes can feel wrong and used by in that way. That's really interesting. Thank you. It sounds like a very delicate balance. Um, so the, yeah. this scene where the bus then approaches Lords builds a real sense of excitement and expectation. What would you say that Lords represents for the women at that moment? And how does that maybe change as the trip unfolds? So what was the beginning of that question? Uh, this scene where the bus is kind of approaching Lords, it's really kind of exciting and there's that feeling of expectation. So oh, yeah. how does the the kind of what does that trip represent represent for them in that moment but then how does that kind of develop what does it how does it um what does it mean for them then as the trip unfolds and things progress so uh, i think that the trip itself is a trip that uh, many many irish people make many people make from around the world when you think that six million people go to lewis every year make a pilgrimage to lewis so it's very common for uh, somebody in the family to, to go to ireland uh, from ireland and um, and so there is always great excitement about it. Everybody goes for different reasons, um, and uh, and I think that um, I wanted to get a bit of that into the into into their revival in Lourdes, a bit of the excitement. They'd left their their family behind. They'd left the kids behind. They've left the house behind. They've left um, all the issues they deal with daily, and they're going to have a sort of sort of holiday. I mean, you know. As I say, there's a there's a serious um, um, the demand that they're making of Lourdes. They, you know, they want miracles, um, and not all of them, like I said. But I think leaving home uh, gives them a freedom uh, and allows them to be uh, open to um, what Lourdes has to offer. Now, what Lourdes has to offer them is, as I said, this uh, Deus Ex Machina character, the Laura Linney character, appears. She has been in America for 40 years. She has, has excised Ireland from her experience completely, and the memory of it is a very unpleasant thing for her. But she has to bury her mother, but it takes her to Lourdes. And it is that arrival that makes that, that interferes with the women's um, expectations there. Um, and yet, being in Lourdes, Lourdes is the kind of place that l makes you open to some spiritual engagement either with yourself or with the world or, the, or with the wider world because you're surrounded by uh, people who are uh, devoted to the uh, the Virgin Mary, devoted to being there, devoted to uh, prayer and uh, spiritual engagement. And if you're in that atmosphere, I think it, it really helps um, you uh, face your problems. It's just that they, this is a problem they didn't expect, the Laurie Linney character um, uh, bring is a worm in the bud. She brings this uh, a problem from 40 over 40 years ago, and it's very unexpected. And so the miracle that they have to sort of um, engage with uh, is uh, really about themselves and change within themselves. Thank you. Um, so you kind of touched on how they, they they leave their families behind, obviously when they go on the pilgrimage. So from the charismatic Father Dermot to the husbands of the story as well, what would you say that the film has to say about men? About men? Um, it has to say more about women than it does about men, I have to say. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, in some original drafts of the, of the script, the men were, were genuinely sort of um, idiots and uh, lazy and all the rest of it. And, um, I wasn't able to rectify all of that, but I was able to sort of at least keep it light uh, and have a bit of fun with the uh, with the men's uh, inadequacies at running the house or, or whatever, and the, and the simple idea that um, uh, men uh, rely on the women to run things entirely while they're out working. So you're looking at a very um, classic family setup, an old-fashioned uh, family setup. Where the man does the work and has the money, and the and the women do the cooking and the cleaning and the washing and the kids and, and all of that. And I try to make light of that. The Stephen Ray character uh, says, "You're not going to leave me here, are you, to do all the washing and the cleaning? And that that's for you to do." And then uh, so 
you know, it's, as I say, it's comic, but it also uh, represents, um, a, a, you know, a culture established, well established at the time. Uh, so it doesn't say anything profound about um, men. But it, uh, I hope it does say something about uh, the role of women uh, uh, in in motherhood and and the, the, uh, the problems of them um, bringing up children, having to. Yeah, absolutely, it does. Um, that's all really interesting. And I know some of our virtual villagers would like to ask you a few questions as well. So I'll um, have a look through the comments. We've had a message from Milian who says, Hi Thaddeus, thank you for your time today. Um, she would like to ask which character has the most profound experience for you personally? Oh, for me, the the right the, the one that I uh, think has the most profound experience. Um, well, I think it's the Maggie Smith character um, because uh, she's engaging with her, her her belief, her faith. She's engaging with her faith. Uh, she's engaging with death, uh, which uh, she says is uh, looming. Um, and she engages with the past and um, she uh, expresses forgiveness um, for a wrong that she did uh, to the Laurie Linney character many years before. So she is, um, I guess, the one who is having to make the biggest uh, challenge, uh, uh, um, tackle the biggest uh, problem. And as somebody at her age, as the character's age, that's not difficult. That's not easy uh, to do. So it probably with a magic smith character. Yeah, that definitely I can um I can see that. Um another question we've we've had through is um what is the attraction of making independent films and do you think there will always be an appetite from movie audiences for indie films? It's really hard. Um uh the reason I stopped making feature films um many years ago was because uh, uh, they were taking so long to develop. They were taking so long to raise the money, get the cast, get the whole thing mounted. Um, I, I worked in television for years because it meant I could have a more regular income. I had a family and, uh, you know, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, spend my life uh, developing projects that were never going to happen or were going to take an awful long time to happen. And in the meantime, I wasn't making any money. Uh, so I did television for quite a long time. And uh, in fact, this is a good example because this film originally was sent to me in 2006 uh, by HBO. And um, I said, yes, I'd be interested to do it. And uh, for various reasons, it collapsed at that time. So I could have hung around and tried to make that film happen then. And I decided I'd go off and do something else. And it only came back to me a couple of years ago. So uh, I wasn't involved in that period of development, but somebody was and and you know that it's and the people who were would have had the, the problem i'm talking about independent film is is impossible it's an impossible business we have something like six or seven investors in the film as opposed to a studio like my wife for example is working on a film at the moment and it's been made by amazon studio so that's one investor so you're dealing with you know one 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 lead producer and one lead you know, financial person and whatever, one legal, one legal person. When you have six uh, investors, they all have their representatives, they all have their legal, their legal people. And my producer is dealing with all these, all these people and it's a nightmare. And um, that's, that's the nature of the business, but it's, it's what I do. Uh, I've made a, a number of independent films and um, uh, this was a great opportunity. I couldn't really, uh, I couldn't really Turned down because when I was approached uh, with it, Maggie Smith was attached to it. You know, you don't turn down the film. You try and make the film work. You know, you don't go to Maggie and say, you know. Well, I, I think if 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 I shot it in two thousand and six, when it was first offered to me, uh, I, uh, it wouldn't have been uh, as interesting a film as it is now. Uh, it has changed a lot over the years, and I, I hope it will do well. Yeah, that's brilliant. It sounds like it was worth the wait, doesn't it? Um, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Like I say, if I if I'd been waiting the twenty years or eighteen, whatever it was, uh, I think you probably would have uh, ended up just shooting yourself. Um, but if I can, uh, if I can, 
if I can leave somebody else to, <laughs> to worry about it in the interim years, and then it, when it comes to me, maybe it's in a better shape. And Maggie was still involved, amazingly. You know, she was, she was a, um, she was attached to that film for a very long time. Something about it. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Um, we've probably got time for one last question. So if you can maybe answer this without spoilers, let us know what you think. But do the women find the miracles that they're looking for? Uh, they don't find the miracles they're looking for necessarily. Uh, they find the, mir the miracles that they need, I think. I love that. That's a, that's a great answer. Um, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's brilliant. Um, that is, it's not too many hours before audiences get to see the wonderful Miracle Club on the big screen. Um, we hope that everyone enjoys it as much as we did. So thank you so much for joining us today at the Virtual Village Hall Film Club. It's been really lovely chatting with you. Not at all. Enjoyed it. Take care. Thank you. And thank you to the virtual villagers for tuning in. If you've enjoyed our conversation, you'll find more interviews um, in our film club playlist. So we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks, everyone. And goodbye. Bye.